Uh, so, welcome to this presentation on foreign function in memory API. Uh, I will show how to basically improve your use of native code inside the Java platform. And this will be through an example using OpenSSL in Apache Tomcat, which is basically what I've been playing with for some time now. So um, I'm Rémi Moshera, I work at Red Hat at the moment. Um, I've been an Apache committer, uh, an Apache Tomcat committer since 2000. I started working on Apache Tomcat 4.0 at the time. And I've been an ISF member for quite some time. I don't remember which year I was elected in, but maybe, I don't know, some time ago. <clears throat> so first we're going to cover the, the basics of the function in memory API. So it's a project that was developed by Oracle. It's part of the Java base module. So basically, it's um, right, the core module of the <coughs> uh, of the JVM. It's part of the Java lang, a part of the language, to, and it shows how important Oracle thinks this uh, new API is. It's been in incubation for a long, long time. So since Java 14, basically. So it started as incubation at that time. It went into preview in uh, Java 19, I think. And it's uh, now in final in Java 22. So finally, it will be included in its first LTS in Java 25 in uh, September 2025. Usually that's what people will want to target for their uh, initial support of the technology. <coughs> So the objective is to be a replacement for GNI. Uh, to do that, it will provide some reflection style coding for your native uh, functions. It's also a replacement for unsafe uh, in light of, the, for example, the new regulation of sof on software development. You probably don't want to use any class name unsafe, I think. So, <laughs> yeah, because then if you get any audits, they will ask probably questions. So. <clears throat> so that's called that's the foreign memory access part of the API. Foreign meaning non-heap memory. Non-heap being the uh, the memory that is that is give, that you get access to through the JVM. And basically, the overarching goal of this API is to greatly improve uh, safety and reliability of uh, integration of native code inside the Java platform. Uh, they plan to co to basically dog food the API, basically remo removing parts of uh, GNI code inside the JVM itself with some uh, FFM coding. They did that for the type support, I think, already. <coughs> so uh, by type, I mean the font support. Like, I think free type, I'm not sure. I think something like that, they rewrote with FFM as dog fooding. So basically, the main concept of the API is to have a memory session, which is now called an ARENA object. It handles the life cycle of the native code. It handles allocations and deallocations. And basically, the, the safety of, the, of that process will come through the... Uh, through being, being gating the closing, basically, which triggers then the deallocation through either an explicit close of the session or a uh, trigger through garbage collection. <clears throat> so the memory segment is the main API uh, that is provided. Uh, it's been there since Java 20. Basically, before it had previous different names and it was split into multiple classes and interfaces, but then uh, they put that, all that together into memory segment for clarity. Uh, it's basically a pointer to either a native or heap memory and with an associated size. Um, basically, it's then tied to the associated session that we saw here and that controls the life cycle. Uh, then the JVM will also uh, make side checks uh, using the associated size, basically. Uh, the segments can have an associated cleanup. For example, if you want to deallocate uh, some uh, some objects or call uh, cleanup memory uh, cleanup native functions, then you can do that in the cleanup action of the memory segment. We take advantage of that. It works very well at the moment. <clears throat> Obviously, native uh, usually have some complex structures, so you have. Um, APIs to model types and structures. Simple types are easy to do, uh, more complex, not so much, but well. 
Valhalla will provide support for additional types because right uh, at the moment some uh, extended types are not supported by the JVM, so that's a limitation of FFM at the moment. <coughs> okay, how it works, basically, you have the, a function descriptor API which will describe the native calls to the JVM. Then uh, you have a sim uh, native symbol lookup to basically uh, look up the native symbol. And then you use the linker API to bind that uh, function descriptor description of the native code with the native symbol. And then it will, it will give you a method, a method handle from that, which is method handle being the new, the new style of reflection API. <coughs> so down calls. Uh, down calls are basically described as calls from Java to native, like you have your native memory, you want, a native function you want to call it. That's called a down call. So how you, go, how you do them? You use the lookup. Uh, to get the, nat the, na the lookup of the uh, symbol lookup to get the native symbol. Use the, li the linker to get the method handle from that. And then you call the method handle as you would do with, uh, with reflection. <clears throat> so an example, okay, basically we are going to call a very simple call uh, of OpenSSL, which basically takes, uh, takes an int. It's not really used at the moment, but it was in the past. And basically, it returns the OpenSSL version string. So what we do is that we first load the library. It says as before. There's a fancier way to load libraries now, but that's more an advanced topic. <coughs> so uh, what would you what would you do? So you use the symbol lookup that is provided by FFM to uh, to look up that symbol. It returns an optional that you get. Basically, it can return uh, null in that case, of course. And it returns a memory segment corresponding to the symbol. <coughs> then you're going to generate the, uh, the method handle you can call uh, to invoke the native method. You're going to use uh, the linker. You say it's a down call, basically, and you, you associate the symbol you got from here through the function descriptor that describes the call. So basically, it's a, it's a method that takes an int. Basically, it's not really used anymore, as I said, but it still takes an int at the moment. And it returns a pointer containing a string, basically. <coughs> so then that works as uh, you do your printout, basically, hello, and then you want to, in to print out the OpenSSL version string. So you, you invoke that, uh, met mm, that method handle with the uh, argument you want. So that's zero in that case. That's an int. And then use the helper method and the memory segment that you get from that. Uh, that's a helper which basically will convert that memory region into a, um, into a string. Basically, it will take a, an array, well, uh, a, some bytes terminated by zero. And then uh, it will convert that into a Java string. So that's a helper function, a very useful helper function that uh, FFM provides. And then it will, uh, it will print out the open special version number without any GNI, obviously. So up calls, that's the opposite. It's a bit more complex. Uh, those are basically callbacks from native to Java. Okay, so the so general idea is to, to bind like to tell FFM to generate a stub for for the native invoke, and that will call back a, a Java object of yours, or a method in a Java object, rather. So basically what you start to do is that you start getting a method handle from your Java method, so that's pure reflection stuff. Then you get, uh, then you use a linker to give out a memory segment containing that function po pointer from your method. That's basically the memory segment points to a stub that uh, JVM has generated for you, basically. And then you, you call the appropriate native down call to gener generally to set the function pointer that you got. And basically then the, the native code will call, you, will call you back. So it might be easier to understand with an example. So basically uh, 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 that's that's an example on how to do certificate validation, basically, on, uh, with OpenSSL. 
basically, so during the handshake, the OpenSSO will get his uh, the client certificate, basically, and then you have to validate it. Probably you want to validate it with your Java Trust store. In that case, you need your you need that callback to basically uh, check the certificate like that OpenSSO got with your Java Trust store. So. So what would you do is uh, what you do is at first you describe the um, uh, the callback API basically uh, in OpenSSL it looks like that basically so that's uh, that's a verify callback uh, point function point method pointer basically it has an int and a pointer basically so you translate that as returning an int taking a first argument as int and a second argument would be a pointer it's called an address here. So you get a you get a callback uh, you get a method handle from your own method. So here I have a static method called OpenSSL callback verify. I describe it as usual in the uh, in the reflection API. So basically, it returns an int, takes first argument int, and then a memory segment which models a pointer. So I acquire the corresponding uh, down SSL da open SSL down call, which would allow me, which would allow me to set the, basically the SSL callback verify uh, function pointer that would need to be invoked. So basically, it's just another down call, like getting the, op <coughs> the open SSL version info. So to do that now, I'm going to have the linker generate the, uh, the stub from the method handle that is here, basically my Java method handle uh, for, with uh, the func uh, function descriptor, basically that was here. Yeah, it describes uh, how the, uh, the native code looks like. And basically that generates the stub that will call back the, the Java method handle. Then I simply call the down call which is basically called uh, set, set the verify callback, basically, and I give it my, uh, my newly generated stub. And then when OpenSSL gets, uh, gets its own, uh, his certificate and wants to check its validity, it will simply call that method with the right arguments. So that's really, really powerful, obviously, because uh, the most complex in GNA was to handle the callbacks and things like that, so now it's very easy. However, as you can see, the code is a bit verbose and annoying, basically. So we have that, that's a single method call. Uh, basically, if you have like 100 different um, native calls to make, like two different methods, well, you have 100 times this. So that's a lot of boilerplate codes. It's annoying to maintain and so on. So due to that, uh, Oracle has developed some tooling called gextract which I'm going to talk about. And obviously for the app calls, it's even worse. So yeah, I think that that poses some maintenance problem. And basically it's as if you were coding your whole application using reflection. So this is nice, but you don't want to do that. Also, it's not very, very safe. So instead, uh, you're supposed to use JExtract in most cases. So basically, JExtract is a tool that uses C header files. And from that, it will generate the, boil the boilerplate code you saw for all the down calls, for all the up calls, and all the structures. So how would you, how would you use it, basically? You need to acquire it first. It's, easy to, it's rather easy to build, I found, with some habit. But now there are some binaries available, especially since Java 22 is, uh, is now available. Uh, it's more viable to use uh, pre-built JExtract. Uh, you have to be aware that basically FFM is more ready than JExtract. JExtract is basically trailing behind in terms of stability. So basically when uh, Java 22 was released, like JExtract was a bit still early and so they are they still refining it. So you shouldn't, you, sh you should plan to upgrade once in a while basically. So from this, uh, this C header file, it will generate all the Java sources needed. However, you have to know that it skips functional macros, which are often used in C or C headers. And that's a problem because basically you'll have to handle them yourself if you plan to use some of the functional macros which are provided by the library. OpenSSL has quite a lot of them actually. 
So, as you can see from before, basically every up call generates a lot of code. Down calls are a bit less, but usually you have more of them. So, basically, if you have a very big library like OpenSSL, uh, the sources generated will be huge. And so it takes forever to compile and so on. So, so what you want to do then is that uh, once you've determined what you're actually using in your library, you want to list the native API used. Jextract allows you to, to limit yourself to these APIs, basically. So you write configuration files and you tell him the list of uh, native calls you want, you want Jextract to generate the code for. It will not generate the rest, basically. And this way, uh, means uh, the ID, your ID won't complain so much and compilation times will be fine and you'll be happy basically. So it was very useful for Tomcat because then having to deal with the whole OpenSSL was way, way, way too big. Um, some, uh, some limitations happened. For example, we, I, talk, I told about like structures being generated by JExtract. That's the case, but it's a bit limited. For example, bit fields, which are which is a common uh, structure optimization in C, are not are not handled. So basically, you have to unpack all your bit fields yourself. Basically, it will uh, it will handle the the size of the of the structure. Like for example, if you have four one bit booleans, like or maybe eight, let's say, it will give you a byte of memory, and you will read the byte properly, but then it won't separate that into eight fields. Basically, you have to do the, the, uh, the Boolean arithmetic yourself, basically, and extract uh, the values you, you're interested in for your bit fields. So you need to then to add the Java methods for any missing functional macros you want to use. So basically, that's, well, you have to code the equivalent. I don't think uh, Jextract will ever have the ability to convert functional macros, unfortunately. <clears throat> uh, then uh, you can use the, the generated classes for all the down call and up calls. Uh, for the up calls, uh, Jextract will, will generate, I'm going to show it, but basically it generates um, uh, a, function, uh, a function interface that you have to implement. And basically, that allows calling back your object in a much simpler way. Basically, uh, if I, I, can, I use JExtract for OpenSSL, and the two examples I gave earlier can be condensed in only three lines of code, basically. So this is the equivalent of the, of the down call, calling the OpenSSL version. So OpenSSL, uh, JExtract will simply generate an OpenSSL version method for you that you simply call. So there's no more reflection style coding. You just call the method, which is a regular Java method, and then the get string because it still returns the memory segment. So for the up call, basically, you can replace that with uh, also a method call for the set verify uh, down call. And then the up call uh, and the stub, like hooking the stub, is replaced by this object that you provide. Basically, you implement the uh, the verify callback uh, interface. Uh, it it contains this. Um, oh no, you, that's my object. Sorry, you implement that uh, that function call that function interface basically, uh, giving it like the, basically the apply method and with the right uh, signature basically. So you implement that signature. Uh, you call allocate, that allocates uh, that stub, basically. Uh, the allocate is, um, uh, the allocate method that it generates just includes the calls to the linkers and all that stuff that you had to do manually, then it was very verbose and tricky. And so basically you allocate, uh, you call allocate with your objects implementing this interface, and then it will generate the stub out of that, and so you give that to the down call. So basically you've done condensed your uh, called back into only this line of code, which looks decent, I think, compared to the equivalent coded by hand. Ten minutes? Okay. So in Tomcat, what does it do? Uh, basically, we have the OpenSSL API style. It was quite well adapted for what we wanted to do in Tomcat and, and used through FFM, basically. It has factories and destructors for everything, which means 
and accessor and setters also, uh, which means we don't have to, to deal with uh, memory layouts and structure allocation and all that kind of stuff that you don't really want to do if you can avoid it. Basically, all we do is uh, use down calls, which are basically setters and getters. It takes the pointers to the structures and everything is really easy to do actually. However, there were many callbacks, so for that uh, we didn't use the J-Extract initially because it wasn't ready yet. <laughs> now I've converted everything to the new style that you just saw, which is very nice, but otherwise, yeah, I had to do all the boilerplate code and then there was many uh, pitfalls at the time. I started working with uh, FFM, like basically on with Java 16, so it was far from being ready at the time. It was a third preview, so it was a bit rough sometimes. So I needed, I, I did need to add a lot of functional macros. Uh, the pro, it's in, it's in right, uh, basically it's not right, it's orange because basically that's a, that's a big, that's a big item. OpenSSL used, um, when, they upgrade, when you upgrade to a new major version, basically sometimes they remove deprecated methods. And, well, usually they add a functional macro to replace it, to replace them. The problem is that JExtract no longer sees them. So basically, when you upgrade to a new OpenSSL version, you regenerate. And then one method disappeared. So that's a bit weird. But actually, it didn't disappear. It's still there as a functional macro. So then you actually have to add the Java code for it. So you have to be aware of that kind of stuff, depending on <coughs> on what your library does. <coughs> uh, however, on the bright side, the headers work pretty well. There are some funny, there are some use of extended types, but not too much, and not in the parts that we actually need to call. So everything is fine. Uh, basically, the extended types, I think they're in the crypto API and stuff like that, so we are fine for that. <coughs> so for TLS support, uh, we translated the Tomcat native code that we had. Uh, so we simply translated the C code, it went fine overall. Uh, yeah, we integrated it with the Tomcat OpenSSL code, and again, there were, again, there were no major surprises here. So, yeah, we needed, we, we could remove a lot of wrapper code and structures and state tracking code from the GNI code. So actually the, the converted code is much, much simpler. Uh, there was a large amount of logic uh, in the GNI layer, for example, for certificate handling, initialization, it was very, very complex. And OCSP also, because OCSP means, <laughs> yeah, Jean-Frédéric is hiding, but he's okay means basically you're doing TLS request and then parsing the contents of the response and so on. And so all that could be converted to actual Java code, so that's much better. Uh, the end results actually support OpenSSL 1.1. It's not limited to 3.0. However, there's no support for OpenSSL clones because they are not close enough into in behavior or API actually, and so unfortunately, uh, JExtract doesn't do like stuff like preprocessor or macros or anything, and basically we can't support both OpenSSL and the clones because they are too different. So, oh, okay, quick example on why YF, FFM is better than uh, GNI. Well, that's, that I have a very good example for cleanup, basically. So basically you create your uh, SSL context, you get your memory segment, no problem. And then the thing is that you can tie up the, the cleanup of the OpenSSL context through the cleanup action of the, of the segment. So basically, when you close uh, your memory session, which is now called on Arena, then it will actually invoke the, the cleanup. And this way, you have a reachability guarantee, basically, because uh, the cleanup of the, the closing of the Arena will open on GC. Your, uh, your basically your native memory will only be deallocated on GC, and so you have a full uh, full guarantee that your Java code is not going to access uh, unless you're messing up with the reflection a bit too much. Of course, it's not going to access your native code uh, after it's been deallocated. So no more crashes basically from that scenario. Yeah. 
five minutes. Okay. So another area that I looked at is quick support because there's there are some really nice C examples now in uh, in OpenSSL. Uh, it's been appearing and it's getting more real, I think, in OpenSSL 3.3 and 3.4. So it's an API based on the uh, current SSL objects that we are using, so SSL context and SSL engine, so that's really nice. Uh, basically, it adds a few, a few methods to that to handle the quick multi-stream thing, so that's really promising. Uh, however, the big roadblock right now is that we need for non-blocking, we still need to do socket pollings on the actual socket pointers using the platform polling mechanism. So that's probably a no-go for Tomcat at the moment. So we'll see how it evolves or, th or anything. But yeah, that's kind of a blocker for quick support. Other than that, it's very, it would be very promising because we, we only have a few extra methods in the SSL engine, basically, to accept uh, Accept substreams basically of the of the connection of the quick connection and things like that. SSL accept stream is the main entry point basically. It would create an, a, 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 a sub uh, SSL engine to a main SSL engine and uh, basically it encapsulates a, str a quick stream into that object. So that's very handy. Unfortunately, not really usable at the moment. So basically, the current status we have, so we did uh, TLS 1.3 with post and check authentication and everything with um, with FFM. So we, we can we get the, sub, the additional support from OpenSSL for key formats, ciphers, protocols as they appear. Performance has been good. Uh, it's basically as close as you're going to get from the, um, uh, from the Tomcat native performance, basically, so I think the extra degradations are for, from the actual security checks that you want to have, like the life cycle checks and the, uh, basically the out of bounds checks that will save you from crashes. Uh, however, for the, the high level API for quick, we are not there yet, unfortunately. So that's the current status. All right, thank you.